This is round six of Mansions of Madness. If the board looks any different, it's, well, partly because I got a new tripod. I got a bendy tripod that can get closer to the board. But also the second thing is that possibly there may have been a very Lovecraftian monster that walked over the entire board. Yes, a cat from Ulthar has visited this board and has tramped across it. Whether or not she's left any sort of lasting disruption, I don't know off the top of my head. It didn't look like it. I looked at previous footage, and I think I have it all set up correctly. But if there are any differences, that's why. The other thing I should mention is that in the previous round, Rita Young gained the insane condition, and the insane condition that she has gained is that she doesn't win the game as normal, and instead must set fire to six or more rooms. This depends largely on the set fire action, and uh, according to the rules, an investigator can perform the set fire action to place fire in a space or an adjacent space. An investigator can perform the action only with a light source. Fire cannot be placed in a space that already contains fire, and when an investigator performs the set fire action, if there is not already a fire on the board, then the set fire option from the in-game menu must be selected. So that's what, in order for her to win the game, she needs to set fire, and she does not have a light source. She has a machete. That's all she's got. So to my mind, and I wasn't sure if I should keep her insane condition active or if I should draw something different, but to my mind, there are now three end uh, conditions, or, or I guess win conditions, to this game. One is that everybody but Rita wins by doing the thing, disrupting the ritual, getting out of the house, whatever they need to do. The, the other win condition is that Rita wins and no one else does. And then the third is, well, really a lose condition, and that is that the cultists win. So that's what we're up against. This is the start of the investigator round. They are all trying to disrupt... Well, everyone but Rita, who doesn't care. Uh, but the, the, the core group here is trying to disrupt this ritual that, that the cultists are trying to enact. And they've tried this twice, and they've failed spectacularly. And they just, they, they, they have to keep trying. I don't know what else to do. Like, they have to disrupt the ritual. So, I think that's going to be a Carson action, and then a Charlie action, and then I'll deal with Mean who is way over here with a Hunted Horror, which I believe she's going to have to make an evade check, possibly. I'll have to see what, what the conditions are to move out of a space containing a monster. So first, let's just start with Carson. We, we know what he's going to do. Here's the Ritual Circle. Click on that. Ritual Circle carved into the ground, scattered with components, attempt to retrieve the Ritual components, but a malign energy protects them. Using your gut and scraps of knowledge you have gathered, you attempt to remove the items without triggering the defensive magic. This is a lore check, but you can discard evidence to gain, like, advantages. I don't believe that Carson has evidence. Yeah, he does not. However, he does have a, an arcane insight spell, which allows him to gain a clue, which I think he is going to cast before endeavoring to disrupt this ritual. He's going to cast Arcane Insight, but as a, a cost of doing that, a strange compulsion to, compulsion to act on incomplete knowledge drives you, and he needs a lore check of two to sort of combat this effect of the spell. So here's his lore check to complete this spell. His lore is... Four. So he'll be rolling four die. And only getting one success. So he does not succeed at his spell casting. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the spell doesn't work. If you pass, you resist your insistent mind. No additional effect. If you fail, which he did, you begin to execute a plan only to realize it ends in your death. Become mesmerized. Then discard this. Well... That went a lot worse than I'd expected. So he gains the mesmerized condition, which is not going to be useful. At least not 
not to him. Mesmerized. At the end of your turn, an alien takes control. Flip this card. Okay, so he's mesmerized. It's not great. Yeah, I guess I forgot to forgot to consider the fact that spells in this game are very costly. They really are. So, okay, so at least he can try... That, that was one action to cast that spell. Now he's going to use his lore again to attempt to to disrupt this ritual. That's the his, his his goal here. Okay, that's not bad. That would have been better, obviously, had he succeeded in his spell. He'd have had a clue token to spend to convert that to three successes, which I really feel like probably is what he needs right now. And I don't know of a good way. Well, you know what? Mean is here. Her ability is that an, someone else can re-roll a, a dice from a check. And I, I feel like this is important enough. I mean, like, this is... We, we have to get this done. If this does not work, we, we're not going to win this game. Ugh. Doesn't, doesn't work. Okay. So, switch back over to the app. Enter two successes. I really don't think this is going to work. Carefully performing each step, you remove a component. Almost immediately, some malign energy... Uh, oh, seems to fade from the air around you. You have put an end to the cult's file scheme. Gain the ritual component unique item, then discard this interact token. So this is a unique component item card. Collection of eerie objects to be used for some heinous ritual. So Carson's got that. I don't know that it's going to matter who has it, but it might, because an alien force is going to take over Carson's mind at the end of Carson's turn, which is right now. But before we do that, let's, let's continue to read the on-screen text. The investigation is complete if an investigator escapes the mansion with... Yep, it does matter who has the ritual components. With the ritual component unique item. Investigators win the game when the investigation is complete. Place an explore token as indicated. I'll just remember that it's the front door. How about that? Mesmerized. So now Carson is mesmerized because he failed his spell, his spell casting. At the end of Carson's turn, an alien takes control. Flip this card. Relative safety. What lies beneath friendly faces? Your companions have secrets of their own. You must leave them. Move two spaces away from another random investigator, then discard this card. Well, that's hugely beneficial. Because, to be honest, there are two... I mean, like, all of the investigators essentially are clustered sort of in this region. The farthest he can get away from any... from all investigators is one... Two, which, which, well, actually, that's a net. That that doesn't change. So right now, he is one. He he shares a space with Rita and is one space from Charlie. So if he if he moves into Charlie's space and then out of Charlie's space, now he shares the space with no investigator, and is one away from Charlie and Mean. So, I mean, and his only other choice, really, because of where he is, the only other choice, this is not a door, this is just a bookshelf. So his only other choice is to move over here, which places him one space from Rita and two spaces from Charlie, but nowhere else to go. But he's not being rational either. This is an alien mind. Okay, so we're going to leave this up to the, the dice gods. If I roll a success, then he'll go this way towards the front door. If I roll a clue, he'll go to the attic, and if I roll nothing, then I'll re-roll. Nothing, re-roll. Nothing, re-roll. Clue. So that's towards the attic. Although that does not satisfy the condition. It says two spaces. Um, I didn't consider that. Did not consider that. That does not satisfy the condition of the card. It's obviously more beneficial if he moves out here. That's why I'm, I think I'm fighting against sort of the logic of him going in that direction. 
uh, and I don't know the motivation of the alien mind that is controlling him. Is the alien mind wanting literally just to get away from the other people? Because that would be out the front door. Or is the alien mind wanting to thwart him now that he's disrupted this ritual? A little bit difficult to know. Good reminder, obviously, that Mansions of Madness is not an RPG. So if he moves at back here, he's painting himself into the corner. But on his next turn, obviously, I'm going to have him move here and then here. Now, during those turns, lots of different things can happen. But if he moves out here in the first place, then he's really, really within the range of lots of monsters. Whereas if he moves back here, he's moving into relative safety. You know what? There are benefits and penalties or, or disadvantages. I rolled a clue token. I said a clue token was going to be towards the attic. That's what he's doing. Okay, so now it's Charlie's turn. So Charlie doesn't have anything to do right now. He, he, he could start to leave the house now that the ritual is disrupted. That seems like it would be a logical thing to do. I'm going to look up evasion because I'm not sure about what happens when you move into a space with a monster. That's my, that's a thing that I probably at this point really need to, to remember how that works. Page 13 of the, the rules reference, move action. If an investigator attempts to move out of a space that contains a monster as part of a move action, the investigator must first resolve an evade check against that monster. That's good to know. And it, because it means that Charlie couldn't, for instance, move, move, at least not, I mean, he could, but it wouldn't, it might not be wise for him to do so, and then grab the ritual component, and then move, move. That's kind of what I was thinking of doing, but I, I don't see the point. I think as, as ridiculous as this may be, I think Charlie needs to just go into combat. And I say that's ridiculous because he's not really a combat kind of person. He's got a knife, which grants him one extra damage upon success. He has no damage right now applied to him. And he has five wounds, or, or five health points, rather. So he could go into battle. I don't see him going further in. Although, you know what, maybe he does to clear the way for Carson. He saw Carson disrupt the, the ritual. So maybe moving in... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite afraid that this monster is going to come in and, and sort of barricade us all into this room. But we have to take care of one thing at a time. So let's take care of the, the wizard first. So we move, he, he'll move in here. He's, he's thinking Rita is on his side. So he's not giving that a second thought. And then he has to take out one of these two, these two cultists. So for combat, I don't know why I'm focusing on the room. It doesn't actually matter. For combat, I will click the monster drawer. And then I guess we'll just go for the big bad. I mean, we could do the, the little cultist for five, his, with 5 HP. Or we could just go for the big guy with 10 HP. Although, you know what? We're not going to take out the big guy. So maybe we should go for the little guy, the support, and just see see what happens. Yeah, let's go for low-hanging fruit, I guess. So that's going to be um, attacking the cultist with a bladed weapon. This is the knife. You quickly close on your foe and direct a slash across its stomach. That's agility. Uh, requiring a success of two. He only has two agility. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. That's one success and one fail. I don't think he's got anything up his sleeve that can fix that. Once per round, you or another investigator within range may reroll any number of dice while, create, while evading a monster. But he's not evading, he's, he's attacking. That's the riot whistle that he got earlier. So that's, that's a fail. Not wholly unexpected, if I'm honest. If you pass, your blade leaves a bloody slash. If you fail, the figure catches your wrist and you clutch for another weapon to see the attack through. If you have another bladed weapon, the monster suffers damage equal to that weapon's damage. Oh, that, 
That's so cool, but unfortunately not applicable. But hey, I didn't lose the knife. I didn't take damage, so actually not a bad turn in a, in a weird way. Okay, so here's Mean. She's facing a hunting horror. The hunting horror is only five, so in theory she could take this thing on. Now, interestingly, she has a kerosene lantern, and if she attacks unarmed, she can discard her kerosene lantern and convert all clue results to success results. So I think she's just going to attack this thing unarmed. I mean, I, I think she would probably use like the little book that she's carrying around. At least whack it with a book. But it's not a weapon. It's not a proper weapon. So it's considered an unarmed attack. You lunge at your foe's legs in an attempt to tackle it with strength of two. Strength requiring uh, two, two successes. What I really want here are clues. Lots of clues. That's, that's what we really, really need. Success, success, and a clue. So she could discard this kerosene lantern to turn that into a success. But I don't think she has to do that. Because she does have a clue token that she can spend. So I'm going to just spend this clue token. Because that's not, I don't feel like that's enough clues to really spend a whole card on. But I mean, that's three successes. That's great. If you pass, you catch your enemy off balance and the weight of your body carries it to the ground hard. The monster suffers damage equal to your test result plus one. That's four damage. That's four damage. I mean, that's amazing. Okay, so that was one move for her. Does she dare another, another attack? I think she might. I really do. I think, yeah, I think that's the smart thing for her to do. I'm going to just attack unarmed again. So this time it's a you challenge your enemy to fisticuffs. Your foe pauses, sizing you up. So this is going to be influence. And she gets to roll two extra dice if she has suffered three or more damage. She has not suffered any damage. So she only gets to roll her natural influence which is actually not bad. I spent so much time sort of downplaying her um, her specs that I kind of just thought she was three all around. Actually, she has a good four in influence. I keep knocking bookshelves over. Wow, that's really bad. That's one success. One success out of, th and three failures. And now normally, Oh, wait. She has a cigarette case. What am I talking about? She has a special cigarette case. Oh, and that's, even that converts clues to successes. The kerosene lantern converts clues to successes. There is absolutely nothing here that can help her. She has holy water, but it requires an action to, to use. So I don't think that she's going to have succeeded. If you pass, well, she didn't pass. If you fail, your incoming fist is slapped bemusedly aside. Okay, once again, really lightweight kind of combat consequences there. Like, that's that, that's both her and Charlie got off really easy in those combat rounds by not taking damage as a result of, of their failed attempts. Okay, so then finally, uh, last but not least, there's Rita. And her her goal at this point is to set fire to as much as she can. So we need to figure out where the most likely source of a, of a light source would be. So I have some unexplored uh, tokens, search tokens down here in the kitchen. One is a watery refrigerator, so that's probably not going to be a good one. But this one by the oven seems like that could be a thing. Uh, the only other ones that I can really think of, well, there's one in the bedroom, an explored token in the bedroom, and way over here, probably off screen, there is a token in a study or a library or something. Now, she could also attempt to grab the kerosene lantern off of Mean. She does have the ability, in theory, to do that, 
it, it's an opposed check. She would try to steal a thing from Mean, and then Mean would have to oppose that action. But then Rita would also have to evade the hunted horror. Then again, Rita could also probably finish that thing off. So one, two, three. You know what she's going to do? Okay, here's what's going to do. She's going to finish the monster off, and then Mean, if, if she does, Mean will give her the lantern on the next turn so that they don't have to do an opposed check. I, I think that's reasonable because Rita hasn't, like, she hasn't switched sides. You know, the monsters aren't like, ah, oh, you're on our side now. Like, she's just, she's just got her own agenda now. She is, she's got the insane condition. So I think it would make sense for her to continue to battle for her own life. But her ulterior motive, yeah, this totally makes sense. And I say Mansions of Madness isn't an RPG. All right, let's go into combat again. Oh, right. Okay, monster drawer. That's where I'm going. Here's the monster. We're going to attack. Rita, of course, has her machete. It's a bladed weapon. This is an agility two check for Rita, which is something great. It's like, a, I don't know, four, four dice or something. Which obviously isn't as great as her strength, but it's it's not bad. I'll take four dice. Oh, that's not as good as I'd hoped. I feel I feel betrayed. It's funny in my head that was just a guaranteed success, but it's actually two fails, one success, and a clue, and I have nothing to convert that clue for her. She has no clue tokens. Charlie has like four. She has none. And Mean has already granted Charlie reroll. Charlie, I think, only gets to reroll or to convert clues for himself. Yep. Wow. So she did not kill that monster. Really, in my head, that was an absolute giveaway. So if you fail, your blade encounters nothing but air, so nothing happens again. Oh boy, that was a rough investigator phase. I mean, we, we disrupted the ritual, which is a major win condition. But, but uh, well, I mean, it triggers the end game, to be honest. At this point, Carson just needs to get out of the house. That's the end of the investigator phase, so let's find out what horrible effects the mythos phase has in store for us. With um, something like five monsters on the board, I, I anticipate the worst. Your mind is weakening with fatigue. This mythos event affects the investigator with the most spells. Guess who that is? Yep, it's Carson. Remembering the strange chants and syllables is difficult, but your instinctive fear of the foreign magic is worse. Lore, success of two. Of course, Carson's lore is not bad. I mean, it's a four. So let's see what he gets. Oh, three successes. Yeah, that'll do, probably. If you pass, education is the best cure for terror, and you hold fast to your knowledge. That's what happens. Vanderbilt moves up two spaces to be in a space with as many investigators as possible. Then it attacks each investigator in that space. So up to two spaces would be one, two, but then he's not in anyone's space. He is in the best place for him to be right now. So he is going to attack Charlie. Vanderbilt charges forward, enveloped in a cloud of swirling shadow that burns your flesh. Suffer two face down damage and one face down horror, but strength negates. I don't know that Charlie is known for strength. He's got three dice in strength. Let's see how it goes. Two successes. So the way that that... The way this works is that a success negates the th the thing you know, one one success negates one thing there are three things and i got two successes so i'm i'm assuming i get to choose what to to ignore or to you know what what gets canceled charlie is actually kind of okay on all counts i mean he's got four four horror cards no damage I think I'll take one horror and one damage. No, wait, that's that's incorrect. I'll take one damage. No, I'll take a horror. It's a face-down horror, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll ignore two damage, take a horror. 
I don't want him to gain the insane condition just because that makes things more complex, I guess. But as I say, if if you take too much damage, then the, the game ends. I mean, that's what happens. Like, not just for that player character, but for everyone. There's like one more round after one investigator is eliminated and then the game is over. The cultist moves up to two spaces, so he's going to attack Charlie as well. The cultist mumbles a dark chant. You feel something writhing within your skin, opening old wounds, suffer one face down damage, but a strength minus one die negates, and then flip a damage face up. So strength minus one die is just two two die for Charlie, uh, and so he's only getting, what, one one face down something or another, so one success, that'll negate what that is, but th then there's the condition at the end to flip a damage face up. Well, because he canceled out the face down damage with his success, he ha he still has no damage, and so he cannot flip the damage face up. The deep one moves two spaces toward the nearest investigator, then it attacks the investigator in its space with the lowest strength. Lowest strength in the first Hunted Horror would be mean with her strength of 3 compared to Rita's strength of 5. So she, the Hunted Horror is attacking Mean. Growling and hissing, the Deep One attacks. Oh, it's not a Hunted Horror, it's a Deep One, whatever. How, how did I get that wrong? I mean, it says it right there. Growling and hissing, the Deep One attacks with savage swipes of its webbed claws. Suffer 3 damage, but strength plus 1 negates. Okay, so she's got three strength die, but she gets a plus one. She is just rolling not really well. Oh, I didn't mean to flip those to successes and clues. That's one success, so she cancels out a thing. Suffer so three damage. So she takes two, two damage. And now these are... I don't think it says face down damage, right? I'm not looking at the screen. Uh, suffer three damage, yeah. So this this is this is actual damage. So I have to read the cards out and then apply them. Aches and pains. The lingering ache of your wounds could be a sign of some deeper unseen injury. Resolve immediately. Become stressed, then discard. Okay, that's great. I mean, stressed isn't great, but discarding that card is great. And that's also grim resolve. The injury is serious, but you will not allow it to slow you down. The stakes are too high for that. Resolve immediately. Become focused, then flip this card face down. Okay, so this damage she, she retains. And so she is gaining both the focused and the stressed conditions, which is interesting. It does almost sound vaguely contradictory, but we'll see. I don't mean the concepts sound contradictory. I mean the cards sound contradictory. You can be stressed and focused. I guess. I don't know. I guess you could argue that being stressed might make you focus on something, but it doesn't optimize your focus. Anyway, stressed. After re-rolling and converting dice results while resolving a test, <laughs> you must remove one success from your p dice pool. At the end of, the, uh, of your turn, d uh, discard that card. Focused, you may discard this card to convert clues to successes while resolving a test. Okay, so they're not contradictory. They, they, they can work in tandem. The deep one, so this is a different deep one now. And it's moving up to two spaces, uh, up to two spaces to be adjacent to as many investigators. Okay, so similar, similar deal here. We've got the deep one who came in from the study, I think. And so he's going to move up one, two, into this space. So it's going to be Mean and Rita again. Lowest agility, I th think. Well, that's they both have the same agility. It's four. So I guess I'll roll dice to determine who gets the attack. Uh, that's going to be... Oh, wait, I forgot to call. Uh, if it's a success, we'll go with mean, and with a clue, we'll go with Rita. Success is mean. Oh, dear. I feel like she's taking quite the beating right now. A guttural sound escapes the Deep One's throat as it gazes at you. 
Its throat bulges for a moment before it spits a frothing steam of salt water into your eyes. Suffer two face down damage, but agility negates. If you suffer one or more, uh, you become dazed. Ugh. So, you suffer two face down damage, but agility negates. Agility for mean is four, just like it was for Rita. There is for Rita. And uh, there's a... There's a success, but she is stressed, so she has to remove a success from her dice pool. So she's done that. So all she has left is a oops, is a clue. She could discard the kerosene lantern to convert that to a clue. I mean, to a success rather, which could be worth it under the circumstances. But actually, I mean, the condition is. If you suffer one or more damage, the brine stings your eyes and you become dazed. So even if she avoids that damage, she's got seven health. I don't think she's long for this world, but I also don't think... I, I think just... I think, yeah, I think I'll just take the two. And the dazed condition. So she's got three damage now. Which, if this plays out the way I'm hoping it's going to play out... That'll be fine. That'll be enough time for the for the player characters to win. All right, so she's got the dazed condition now. You cannot spend clues to convert dice results and then discard this card. Well, I mean, I'm just going to discard this card now because she doesn't have clue tokens, so it doesn't it it actually doesn't matter to her. And then there's one more deep one, and it's going to move two spaces. And you can kind of see the deep one here, way over here. He's the one I'm not 100% sure that that's the correct position due to cat effects. He might have been here. I just don't remember where he spawned and it was off screen. So uh, he's going to move. I I'm assuming he was here because I feel like he, even if he had spawned... Oh, no, wait, he'd spawned here? No, I don't know where he spawned. So wherever he spawned... I think he might have spawned here, actually. One, two. Yeah, so he would have been there. Yeah, okay. So he's going to move into the space, and guess what space that would be? Yep, it's the same space as as everyone else. So they're just, they're just really, really intent upon uh, taking down these, these, these players. So let's find out who, who it attacks. Lowest strength. Guess who that would be? Yes, mean. Okay, so the attack is the deep one lashes out with his claws, but agility two will negate this. So we know mean has four agility and a bunch of penalties. Uh, the most notable penalty probably is that she has to sacrifice one success after a roll. She doesn't get to keep one of her successes, but we'll we'll see how she does. Oh no. It's just all she has is a success, but she sacrifices that because she's stressed. No clues, so there's really no helping her. Not, not, I, I, yeah, that's just really bad. If you fail, you feel the creature's claws rip into you and a bone deep chill racks your body. Suffer two damage. Okay, well, she's, she's still okay. Uh, amazingly. I mean, how okay, I don't know. But she, she's got three damage. And these two new ones. So one is a minor injury. It's only a flesh root wound. Resolve immediately. There's no additional effects. And the second one, miraculously, is also a minor injury. No additional effects. Discard this card. Well, she just got really, really lucky. Each investigator must now resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the, horror, the, the highest horror rating after all horror has been resolved. Okay, so the way this works... People within range have to resolve horror checks, and it's just the the creature with the highest horror rating. Charlie and Carson, I think, are going to resolve against the Vanderbilt, William Vanderbilt, and then Mean and Rita obviously are going to resolve against a deep one. I mean, all the deep ones have equal horror, so so yeah, just resolving against one is is the same as resolving against the highest. Okay, so first we'll do Carson and Charlie versus William Vanderbilt. 
Vanderbilt calls out to the stars, begging for your demise, observation of two. If you pass, well, we'll, we'll worry about passing and failing in a moment. So this is observation, success of two is required. Observation for Carson is five. Now I feel bad about these, <laughs> these dice that rolled in sort of the crack in the floor that appeared. Um, I don't feel like that's quite... whatever. Okay, so he got two successes, so he's passed. And now Charlie. Charlie has an observation of four. And he got two clues. Well, he's got clue tokens to spend. Like, lots of clue tokens. He also has the ability to convert clue tokens to successes if he's within range of a person which he is. So he's going to spend one clue token to convert one of these and then just use his ability to convert the other one to a success. So they both pass. No problem. Now let's find out what the ladies are up against. They're against a deep one. The deep one opens its maw and unleashes a terrible sound, calling out to its allies. Well, its allies are right next to it, so it doesn't have to call very loudly. Suffer one face down horror, then move each other monster within range one space toward. Okay, so they're not going to. The horrors, or the, the deep ones, whatever they are, um, aren't going to move because they're already there. But it does sound like, without a roll, without a chance at reprieve, one face down horror. Now for Rita, because she has gained the insane condition, the horror cards are basically like damage now. Uh, if she racks up enough horror to equal her horror threshold of five, then, then she is eliminated from the game. Rita has a horror threshold of seven, and she only has, with this new acquisition, she only has four horror, so... So she's more or less safe. Things are getting dicey all around. That was all of the mythos phase, I believe. Yeah, it was. Okay, we're still in the game. We're definitely still in the game. Carson has to get out of this house. The next turn, he'll have one, two, one, two. And then it's just a quick little dash out the front door. So if he gets away with his... Um, evidence, we have won the game. Rita hasn't, the NPCs haven't, but Charlie, Carson, and Mean have. I mean, Rita has too, she just doesn't understand it. She thinks that she has to burn the house down to win the game. Frankly, with everything in this house, I, I may have to agree with Rita on this. But anyway, hopefully, if, if all goes well, and things might not go well, because Carson has to move through a space with bad guys in it. And in order to do that, he has to make an evade check. That's risky. That could go horribly wrong. But if things go well, he should be out of the house within two rounds. We'll find out what happens. Thanks for watching.